circle and we had a request from one of the viewers and I do like to as you all know read through all the comments and um, if anyone's got suggestions I like to take them on board and Nathie was asking about a video um, to do with real-life application of 40k firearms things like that so I thought I'd indulge him so in this episode we're gonna be looking at how firearms work and how bolt guns could work so this is the internals on an mp5 not everything is shown um, the mp5 is obviously using a roller based delayed blowback system 9mm cartridge can be chambered for 10mm depending if you want that more stopping power uh, you have multiple firing modes such as single full auto burst fire safety depending what type of model you have etc etc as you can see they're quite complicated internally and submachine guns generally speaking are actually very uncomplicated in the world of firearms um, pistols are often far harder to work on um, especially when you get inside that trigger mechanism at the back of them generally machine guns are the hardest to work on just because there's a lot of parts and rifles are somewhere in the middle some machine guns can be really simple in fact uh, things like the Uzi are as simple as it can get anyway Games Workshop once upon a time released this image of the Storm Bolter and I have it in the third edition uh, basic rulebook now problem with this is well there's many problems there's internal pulley mechanisms some sort of gigantic sharp eye gouging pin that looks like the thing used in the the Billy Zane Phantom movie to gouge a guy's eyes out when he looked through a um, monoscope uh, correction microscope and yeah that's bizarre second thing to note here is that obviously the barrel is here chambered rounds are chambering literally directly above so there would be no barrel in this instance right it just makes absolutely no sense it's just too close to the front of the weapon the rounds would go up they have nowhere to go right to chamber now chambering means that the round has to move forward into the rear portion of the barrel can't happen um, with this design now the way that looks like they've made it try and work is that the bolt rounds come up move somewhere towards the back here where these slides are similar to how a pump action shotgun works where the rounds will be um, pushed backwards from where they're actually held in the magazine and then a lever will flick them up in front of the bolt face however that's again that's got more issues because these little bolt blocks here are absolutely tiny and useless and you couldn't use them for that and with the firing pin permanently sticking out you, all sorts of problems would ensue so basically this design is shithouse looks cool drawn by someone with no idea about how a firearm works and you can talk up space magic and things like that as justifying how it works but the sheer mechanics behind it it won't it physically won't work you know an orc weapon can rely on magic to power it a bolt gun can't so how does a weapon really work being former military and an armorer I will tell you how a weapon works in the case of an automatic rifle in this case we have an assault rifle the Steyr Og uh, Army Universal Gever uh, do forgive me my German pronunciation isn't good anyway first thing that happens is you have rounds in the magazine here the rounds are pushed up by the spring when the bolt is at the rear the round will pop up in front of the bolt thanks to the spring tension when the bolt is released it will move forward and it will push one of these lovely rounds forward and chamber it once it is chambered this trigger mechanism here is free to be acted upon by the trigger itself when the trigger is pulled two little rods inside the weapon come all the way back here and they push on a little block and when the little block moves called the sear it allows the uh, hammer to rise up strike the rear of the firing pin which will then move forward rapidly striking the percussion cap of the round firing the round the spring here will then push the firing pin back to the rear however the hammer will still be in the raised position the round will be rapidly propelled up the barrel so along the rifling and when it gets to about this point here 
there's actually a couple of small holes that go down into another chamber and inside that chamber is what we call a piston so some of the gas that's pushing that bullet goes into this chamber and pushes back on the piston now the piston is connected by a very long rod and it comes all the way back to the receiver and inside the receiver right we have what we call the bolt carrier which is this block inside here which is holding our bolt and the whole bolt carrier will be pushed back along these guide rods now when this occurs firstly the round is extracted and then ejected thrown out the side of the rifle at the same time as that the hammer is actually pushed down and locked into position by our sear in this case it's um, using this sear back here anyway that's how a rifle works as soon as you if you're firing on full automatic for example it will just keep moving back and forth there's nothing to actually stop it from doing so because on full automatic uh, one of our sear blocks is actually moved out of the way the style uses a double sear not important but it will repeatedly do that action every time it fires until such point as it runs out of ammunition and as you can see there are certain key points to take away here the first is gas is being used to cycle the weapon second point of note here is that the bullet must move forward in order to be chambered right and the ejection port is generally in line with the magazine and you must feature an ejection port for reasons we'll go into later but in this type of weapon ejection port is there because if you have uh, rounds that failed didn't fire or you need to clear the weapon or get rounds out of the weapon that have already been chambered that's how you get them out so how would you make a bolt gun work well a bolt gun's a bit more difficult you see a bolt gun is designed to fire in space and when you have something that's in space in a vacuum in a very cold and hot environment simultaneously weird shit happens for example your grease can turn to solid well solid um, like, like an ice block because in space it can be 200 minus so you can't just have regular greases so the maintenance becomes a bit of a nightmare because it's got to be able to take direct sunlight in space which can be incredibly hot as well as the incredible cold that's in space so there's two ways of doing this you can either use a very special grease that, you know like we use on the international space station and in our spacecraft or you could have heating elements like we also use in our spacecraft and on the international space station for simplicity's sake I haven't really included those but I have included things that would be related to it the second point of note is you can't put a gas system in this weapon a traditional gas system um, that you couldn't seal it correctly technology even in the future probably couldn't so a chambered round that is ignited gas would somehow find a way of getting out flowing into any loose gap or anything it would expand incredibly rapidly because gas inside a rifle um, on planet earth is forcing its gas to expand against the pressure of atmosphere in the vacuum of space that gas is going to instantaneously expand as rapidly as possible could rupture the weapon damage the weapon all sorts of problems ensue so gas cycling is not a good idea so instead I've looked for another design known as the gyrojet Now, the gyrojet is something that's not very popular it never took off forgive the pun basically it's a round which has a uh, rocket propellant instead so it has four little jets on the back of it right the jets are carved on an angle internally or drilled on an angle board however you want to say it with a fuel source this means that when the round is actually fired it imparts spin on it providing accuracy the downside of a gyrojet system is that a gyrojet um, gyro sorry uh, has very low starting velocity whereas with that rifle round pistol round that kind of thing power used in cordite or conventional explosive propellant is pretty much instantly at that supersonic speed the gyrojet actually needs time to speed up so this is it can cause problems in that regard but it suits our purposes so trigger design in here really simple 
instead of having all the large moving parts of the mechanism, again, it's space. We don't want to have all those moving parts that need lubrication because it could freeze up. So instead, what we've got here is an electronic unit which will sense as we fire, as we pull on the trigger. Right? This big block that's always sticking out the back of the regular bolt gun, I'm calling that where we'd have a battery, and that big round knob that's on the back would be the release lever for our battery. Why is it so big? Because gloves are clunky, right? The Space Marines are using these big power armored gloves. They're clunky, right? And this battery in here would be fantastic battery, but occasionally you will need to change it. That battery power source has to go to several different places. So there's siding systems, there needs to be an ignition source for the actual gyro jet itself. So it needs to be able to power it so that when it's fired, it will actually, you know, that's how you ignite it. You can't, you're not using a firing pin in this instance. The other thing to remember is that the bolt itself, because we have no gas system, now needs to be pushed. So my concept would be to install a um, piston and it would be just a solenoid basically. Electrically powered, reciprocates at whatever speed you program it to and it will pull the bolt back by extending a piston here, which because it's connected to the bolt carrier will pull the whole bolt assembly back under spring tension. This little device here is just a buffer to help take out the recoil of it rapidly moving back. As it moves back, it will allow the next bolt round to come up. It will then move forward, chamber the next bolt round. Inside a real weapon, um, you'll have a chamfer here in order to act as a guide for the nose of the round, things like that. Not important, right, to know here. All you need to know here is that it fucking exists. <laughs> okay. Now, why would we still want an ejection port on it if we're firing the entire projectile and there's no spent casing? Well, in order to, uh, again, clear out the weapon if a round fails to fire or if um, you, say, get back to barracks and you've got a bullet still in your magazine, well, how are you going to get them out? You've got to cock the weapon, right? Take the, well, first thing you'll do is apply your safe, take the mag off, cock the weapon. And any round that's in there should fly out the side, right? That's the idea behind it. And so you'll have an electrically activated uh, extractor core here, an ejector post as required. But again, that's very minor stuff that you have to worry about inside the weapon. So that is how you'd make a bolt gun work, right? Theoretically, right? There's many ways I'm sure you could do it. But to me, this is the simplest way taking into account those problems that space brings up. Right, because space is the trick. You can't have a weapon which is firing conventional rounds and spitting brass out the side. It would not work in space because that's just physics, unfortunately. You would create yourself more problems doing it that way than doing it with a system like this. And you want to go for the simple approach. Another point of note is a weapon like this, as it's shown, all those Chaos Space Marines and Orcs and things like that that have, well, I guess Orcs can get away with it, but space. Chaos Space Marines especially. You can't just have a belt of ammunition like a machine gun plugged into the bottom. That's not how magazines work. Some machine guns like the Minimi, for example, when chambered for 556, um, they actually have a separate magazine well on the side just for putting M4 mags in. All right, But it has to be separate to the belt feed mechanism because they are two totally different mechanisms. The only common part in them is the bolt and the bolt carrier themselves, right? The feed tray isn't utilised, for example. Um, the core system the, for pulling across the actual belt, none of that's used. So, yeah, important note. When you have a weapon like this, right, something weird would have to be happening inside of a heavy bolter. Because, again, if you're going to have a belt of ammunition where they're held together with individual links, you'll need a way of ejecting the links out separately to the rounds. Also, inside this weapon, no chamber, again. And and that's fine, you don't need a long barrel and a, a big chamber if you're using a gyrojet system, right? But in this instance, with these bolt rounds, they have a ejection port which is five times the size of the fucking round or something, and the muzzle is just ridiculously big. I'm not sure what it's doing. It's just the cartoon rule of cool, and I totally get it, I totally accept it. But... Viewer want to know, what is the real life 
way that you would get this to work. That's the real life way. That's how you do it. So I hope this has been an informative episode for people out there. Um, Probably a bit dry for some people, especially people who are really into their firearms. I won't have taught you anything amazing here, except maybe about the stuff about how things work in vacuum and space. Um, We try to be positive on this channel, okay? A lot of our videos are negative, but they're only negative when we're talking about things that companies are doing wrong, like Games Workshop, right? We don't do a lot of positive stuff because positive things are positive already. They don't need us to suck their dick. Anyway, again, I hope you all enjoyed the episode. It's something different. If you like it, you want to see more things like this, weird things, put it in the comments. Hopefully I can come up with something for you. I'm Mac with The Outer Circle. Thanks everyone for watching and we'll see you all next time.